friends and welcome to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. 30 years and a bunch of weeks ago, the next episode of Star Trek The Next Generation premiered. It was called The Bonding, and these are my honest opinions about it. This is the first script ever written by Ron Moore. Ron D. Moore, to be more precise, uh, not to be confused with Ron B. Moore, who was the special effects guy on the show. Uh, I will be a bit controversial for a moment. I know that a lot of people love this guy's work, but I'm not one of them. There was something bothering me with his style of writing, and for a while I couldn't uh, find out what it is. I understood it only after I've seen some of his non trek work, like for example his Battlestar Galactica reboot. I will try to explain my problem with uh, his solo script, let's call it fake drama, or you can also call it emotional manipulation. The best way how I can describe it is that he tries to force us to feel a specific emotion when he wants it, uh, instead of just letting us, the viewers, uh, make our own emotional journey. Hopefully the thing I just said made sense to at least somebody. For example, in this script he desperately tries to make us feel sad or maybe even cry for the first, let's say, half of the episode, but what he achieves, at least in my case, is boredom. I do remember this story very well. When I've seen it for the first time I was a kid, during the first half of it uh, I felt extremely bored, and during the second half I felt extremely terrified. <laughs> as in I started to shake and had to leave the room. Now, when I've seen it as an adult, during the first half I was extremely bored, and during the second half I felt a bit uneasy, but not in a very bad way. I don't think it's a scary uh, thing anymore, but I still find it a bit tough to watch. I must break one of my principles again and talk a bit about my privacy because it's relevant to the me being terrified as a child bit. I used to have one nightmare as a child. It used to repeat itself almost every night for a few months, then I could sleep for a few months, and then the cycle repeated itself. The base of the nightmare was basically that uh, weird little children with big heads, dark grey skin and strange clothes used to hunt me. I don't know why, but when they caught me, I woke up. But a plot twist, sometimes when I thought I woke up, I didn't find myself at home, in my bed, but in a weird hospital. And these weird grey children were doing something with me. They tried to tell me that everything is okay and I shouldn't be afraid, but because they didn't tell it uh, to me using words, but I heard their message directly in my head, I got afraid even more. So after a few years of them hunting me down, they started to use a different strategy, they started uh, to create a second mother for me. Always when I found her, she was very friendly and smiling and tried to force me to go with her to a special place. I usually get scared even more and ran away, only to find my real mother soon, and she was always close to the place where the fake mother appeared, but she was frozen in time, she didn't move or react. So yes, I had these nightmares during my whole childhood and even a few times during my university studies. So yes, when I've seen this episode as a child, uh, it contained bits taken directly from my worst nightmares. But enough of rambling, uh, let's talk about the plot. The Enterprise explores a seemingly uninhabited planet. This time they send down an away team, led by Mr. Worf. They report they found out that the planet was inhabited by the Koinonians, when suddenly 
a bomb goes off. A bomb from ancient war. When they beam uh, directly to sickbay, Lieutenant Marla Esther is dead on arrival. She left behind a 12 years old uh, son, Jeremy. And during the first half of this episode or something like that, everybody behaves like this is a giant tragedy. See, this is my main problem with this part. I find it boring. I found it boring as a child and I find it boring as an adult. So, one crew member died. Okay, so... Maybe it makes me a cold-blooded bastard, but I just don't care. It all happens off-camera, we don't see it, we are told what is happening instead of being shown what is happening. Also, who the hell is Marla Esther? Everybody behaves like this is a giant loss for them, but we have never met her before. Why exactly should I care? I mean, in the original series we saw red shirts die left and right, and we never really were forced to care. We meet Jeremy, and as I said, Ron is milking this idea. He is really, and I mean really, trying to force you to be sad. And I'm sorry, but I'm not. Okay, the boss lost his mother. Well, it sucks, but as many characters say, it's the risk of the job. So yes, this whole part of the episode is just people talking about how sad they are, or how they miss Marla, the woman who we never met before, and how bad they feel for Jeremy, a boy we never seen before. They sit on their butts and talk, and I'm bored. Worf is sad and he wants to do a Klingon bonding ritual, which means that they would be basically brothers. Deanna doesn't think it's a good idea, but Worf goes to the boy even if she doesn't like it. But no, nothing really happens. Yet, we also have another tearful scene, this time with the Crushers. Because now Wesley is sad, because it reminds him uh, of the time when his father died. He was perfectly fine with it for the last two seasons, but now he suddenly remembers that uh, he did not deal with it emotionally during the last several years. So yes, people crying and people sitting on their butts talking about their emotions. If you are entertained by this, more power to you, but I am not. I am bored. But uh, what's that? Something starts to happen. Jeremy watches his old cat videos, uh, not on YouTube but on his iPad, when suddenly his dead mother comes to say hello. As an adult I say finally, as a kid this was the moment when I left the room before my parents uh, would notice that I started to shake and give me weird questions. So yes, a fake version of his mother comes to him, is overly happy and smiling and wants to take him to a great place, this time to a replica of their earth house on their planet. This was way too close to my nightmares for me as a child, but I'm so grateful for this as an adult, because something finally happens. The first person who meets her is Worf, who wants to visit Jeremy. He immediately wants to interfere, but Picard wants uh, to talk with her first. They meet in the transporter room and they manage to take her. She disappears after they cut off the power stream coming uh, from the planet. However, as soon as Deanna brings Jeremy to his quarters, it's been again transformed into the home of the Esters from Earth and the quote-unquote mother is back too. So now the second half of the show is uh, them trying to interfere with her plans and them trying to keep Jeremy on the ship for as long as possible. In the end we get an explanation about what is actually going on. Thousands of years ago the planet was inhabited by two different intelligent species one of them had bodies, the other species was just pure energy. They had war which ended up with the meat bags being destroyed. When the Enterprise crew went down, they have accidentally activated one of the bombs which were still there. The energy beings couldn't prevent the death, but they felt bad for the sun, 
so they created the illusion of his dead mother and their house. And they are also willing to allow him to live with them in a never-ending illusion. But it's all what they can offer him, just an illusion and memories. Troy tries to explain the fake Marla that this would eventually turn into a kind of a torture for the boy. And when Wesley arrives and tells them that he hated Picard for years, not because he brought uh, Wesley the message, but because he was the leader and he survived. Jeremy finally breaks down in tears, asking Worf why he didn't die, because the whole episode was about making Jeremy cry. I don't really get it, why didn't they just allow him to deal or with his loss alone? But the fake Marla, of course, disappears, and Jeremy and Worf go through the bonding ritual, so now they are brothers. I'm sure that this will influence Worf's life tremendously, now that he has a little brother, or they will never ever mention this again. Hmm, okay, sure, whatever. As I said, it might be controversial, but I don't like Ron Moore's writing. I was always more of a Brennan Braga fan and a Joe Minoski fan, but he joined the team in the next season. I have nothing personally against him, I just don't like his writing, and this episode is a nice example of why I don't like it. It has way too many moorisms in it. It also has some very strange choices. Choices which are so bad that I'm wondering why were they left in the script, unless these choices were deliberate to save some money, or something like that. For example, why don't we go down to the planet with any of the two away teams? Why is the main hero, kind of, killed off screen? Why is a huge chunk of the episode just people sitting and talking about other people's feelings? That gets against all of the basic principles of visual storytelling. The only reason I can imagine for these choices are budgetary restrictions. Also, why should we care about Marla? What if they would introduce her, uh, for example, a few episodes ago and uh, get her at least one line in every episode? You know, so that we can actually care about the fact that she died. I know I am repeating myself, but in TOS it was normal that we have seen people die, and the episodes didn't waste more time on it than necessary for the plot. There is one interesting scene in the first half, a conversation between Data and Riker, and it's so good that I think it's written by Michael Piller. Riker says that maybe if mankind would mourn uh, the death of every individual as much as we mourn uh, the loss of our friends, our history would be far less bloody. That's a very nice thought, very Star Trek-y. The second half is great, I really love it, from the beginning to the end, with maybe the exception of Wesley's subplot. So, on my standard scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 5 is average, and 10 is a masterpiece, I would give this episode 5 out of 10. I hate the first half and love the second half. So, an average 5 makes sense to me. But as always, these were just my opinions, so let me know what did you think about this episode down in the comment section. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button, and I will try to do one more effects comparison and a quick thoughts on video this year. But until then, thanks a lot for watching, I wish you a Merry Christmas if you celebrate it, and Happy Holidays to everybody else. Thank you very much, and bye.